ventral sulcus, in front, frontal lobe, behind, parietal. Sylvian fissure below, temporal lobe. Okay? The central sulcus in front is your precentral gyrus corresponding to Broadman's area 4. Diba? Function is primary motor cortex and with your homunculus with the face region here, your upper extremities, your torso will be here. In front of precentral gyrus is your precentral sulcus, from which emanates two sulci, superior frontal and inferior frontal, dividing the rest of the frontal lobe into superior frontal gyrus, middle frontal, and inferior frontal. On the left, inferior frontal is significant because of the presence of your brocus area here, corresponding to your pars. Opercularis and triangularis, which is your Broadman's area 44 and 45, which is your Broca's speech area. Where if you have lesion of this area supplied by what vessel? Your left middle cerebral artery, you would have aphasia. And specifically, if this is involved, you would have motor aphasia. And your speech will be monosyllabic. You call that telegraphic speech, okay? Now, uh, so those are the important parts of the frontal lobe. Uh, now, before I forget, when you identify the precentral and the postcentral, be sure that you are properly oriented because if you see the cerebellum there, then you would know that this is anterior and therefore this is precentral and this is postcentral, so that you would be properly oriented. Now the. Uh, part behind the central sulcus is your parietal lobe. The gyrus immediately behind is your post central gyrus, which is your primary somesthetic or sensory area. Corresponding to Broadman's area 312, the same homunculus as your precentral. That, but if you have lesion here, you would have a complete loss of your proprioception and discriminative touch. There would be a gross perception, a vague perception of pain and temperature because this is a, uh, at the thalamic level you would be able to appreciate. But completely you will lose pain and disc I'm sorry, discriminative touch and proprioception well on the opposite side because of the crossing of your dorsal column tracts at the middle thirds of your medulla. Okay? Behind your postcentral gyrus is the postcentral sulcus, and then the rest of the parietal lobe is divided into superior parietal lobule and inferior parietal lobule. Superior parietal lobule is your secondary sensory cortex or somesthetic cortex, wherein if uh, <clears throat> you would be able to perceive texture, shape size and therefore even with just touch you would be able to identify the structure you are holding and this is because of the function of your superior parietal lobe on the right this is important because if this has a lesion you would have contralateral neglect pag ito pag right super, superior parietal lobe okay now your inferior parietal lobe is made up of two smaller gyri the supramarginal and the angular. How do you distinguish between the two? If you follow the sylvian fissure, the gyrus that hugs the tip is the supramarginal. If you follow the superior temporal sulcus, the gyrus that hugs the tip is the angular. Both of these are part of the association cortex. If your precentral is a motor cortex, your postcentral is a sensory cortex, your supramarginal and angular are association type of cortex. Your angular cortex, angular gyrus on the left, this is the left, would be your vernicus area for written word. Okay, so that if you have pure dyslexia or alexia, means inability to understand written word, you, uh, this might be the area involved, your angular, left angular gyrus. Okay? So those are the parts of the parietal lobe. Again, both central, superior parietal lobule, inferior parietal lobule made up of the supramarginal and angular. What are the parts of the temporal lobe? Three gyri, 
severe parietal as well as severe temporal, middle temporal, inferior temporal. Of these three, the superior temporal is uh, has a functional significance because it contains the transverse gyrus of Heschel here, which is the primary auditory area, and along its uh, its uh, bank at its posterior surface would be your vernicus area for spoken word or corresponding to Broadman's area 22. So you hear it there, you understand it here. So that if you have a vision of the uh, Wernicke's area or Broadman's area 22, again supplied by your deaf middle cerebral, you would have sensory aphasia characterized by saying a lot of words, jargon aphasia, with no meaning. Or you also call that word salad or neologisms. Okay? So those are the parts of your temporal lobe. Superior temporal, middle temporal, inferior temporal. Uh, meron ba kayong medial?